Welcome to the next installment of the Datamate live webinar series, Datagram 3D. We'll do a, a bit of a review of the new version 4 that's recently out just to get everybody up to speed on the latest version of Datagram 3D. Then we'll talk a little bit about accuracy in general with close range photogrammetry and specifically uh, using Datagram 3D. Uh, the, the accuracies that you can expect. I, I just went through and picked a number of projects, different project types that were done using Datagram 3D. Just created new points where there were existing points in the field and compared the results just so that we could look at those accuracies, what the software is actually reporting versus what you can expect in the field. So We'll, we'll do that. If you have any questions, please feel free to open them up, uh, ask us in the chat. And of course, we'll be following up at the end of the webinar for any questions that we miss. We'll definitely follow up with that with you. All right. So uh, I'm Eric Colburn, professional land surveyor with Colburn Strategic Partners. And this is being hosted by Datamate. Datamate is the leading vendor of field-to-plan software products. They have hundreds of customers, mostly land surveying firms. That's pretty much what the software is made for. Jad Jarush, PhD, is founder and CTO. Haim Zelikovsky is co-founder and CEO. And, of course, Eric Colburn. We've already gone through that. So, again, the outline of this webinar is that we're going to review Datagram 3D version 4, and then we're going to review accuracies and compare those accuracies to conventionally located objects in the field. There's been a few iterations of Datagram 3D. I guess a little over a month ago, they came out with version 4.0. It has some really great features to it, not the least of which are surface reconstruction and drawing 3D mesh. It also has now full support for codes, blocks, and attributes. And I'm going to go through, show you some of these uh, in a minute. We have automatic point numbering, which is a really great feature, makes the flow of drafting go really quickly. There's manually merging of image clusters. There's an undo slash redo of drafting actions, which is helpful. New camera calibration methodology, which we won't really go over in this. It's just pretty much the same, same procedure that was used before. They've just uh, refined that a little bit. Automatic image linking algorithm has been improved. There's support for multiple measurement units. Major user interface changes working with CAD software has been improved. So let's just see. I'd like to start all, out all of these webinars with, you know, a case study that shows you how, how the software is actually working. And I'd like to continue with that for those that aren't familiar with Datagram 3D and close range photogrammetry specifically, but we can also start to look at some of these features in version 4 and the new layout too as we do this. And this is actually uh, the reason I started with this case study for small site mapping is because I actually am going to use this later in the presentation, uh, show you how I develop the accuracies in the comparison charts. So uh, this was a small house site gather existing conditions. This is actually a project of mine. The key challenges are low obstructions. It's just one of those difficult small yards to get around with if you were surveying conventionally to do topography. Locate the house. Mostly concerned with the house you'll see in a minute and a deck off the back of it. But they also wanted grades, topography down to the water which is behind the camera view which you'll see in all well you'll see the camera view there's a pond water edge behind all the camera views uh, so it's a really just a, one of those tough small lots to get around 
Plus, the project was time sensitive. They they wanted the project fast, and uh, with cold weather coming on, did this a couple of months ago, and the the surveyor myself desired high productivity. I really wanted to be able to get the job done out of the way. It was a cold day, so I wanted to limit the amount of time I spent out in the field as well. So conventionally, I had planned, uh, you know, probably a full day, but take out a little bit of driving time, and it wasn't that big of a sight to walk around about six hours in the field. I'm sorry, six hours, four hours in the field, two hours in the office. And in actuality, uh, it only took me about two and a half hours, one hour in the field, and an hour and a half in the office. So let's see if we can't switch to Datagram 3D. There we go. All right, that's up on the screen. So again, th this uh, is a small site. There's a, a pond behind me, and what you can't see are a row of shrubs. The camera was mounted on a 25-foot pole. And I had it probably not up the full 25 feet because there were some overhanging trees too. So I had it about 18 to 20 feet. And I just started from the right-hand side and worked my way around the left-hand side taking pictures. And came in. I had done a little bit of processing of these points. If we look at the geo-referencing. Okay, so I located a small amount of survey control. I did a little bit extra because part of the case study here, we wanted to be able to check conventional to act actual points as well. Hold on a minute. The controls are getting in the way. Um, and then what we can do in Datagram 3, once we've georeferenced the images, we can create points, polylines, and polygons. And what you can see here is the results of that. So all I did was click on the corners of the concrete pad. Let's turn on names so we can see them. Okay. And it drew those points in full 3D. So not only are the points in 3D, but the polylines, polygons are in 3D. I actually, I think I have another version of this that I was working on that has more drafting in it. But so you can see there's a little bit of the wall, some of the they really weren't concerned with the house itself, and I had located that in a prior survey, the outer edges of the house, but they were concerned with this deck, the elevations and locations of it, and then some of the topography going down to the water. Okay, so really just, you know, as far as Datagram 3D goes, you just pick an image you want and you start drawing on it and what we can see is if we look at the approve screen we then can see that point as we we created it in one image but then what the software found in all the other images and the accuracies here which I don't know how well you can see that on the screen but for instance this top point number three we're looking at X Y and Z accuracies respectively of 0 0.036 0 0.027 and 0 0.011 feet. So we're getting high redundancy on these points because they're showing up in multiple images and each image or pair of images acts as an independent measurement, if you will. So for the first time, your topography allows you to have multiple redundancies built into, is that a little redundant? Uh, have redundancies built into the creation of points as opposed to turning one angle and one distance or uh, taking a GPS shot on a single point. So again, that's just a simple process of, of taking an image after everything's been geo-referenced and going ahead and just drafting right on it, which you can see I've drafted some elements right on here. Walks, deck, the wall, some of the concrete pad. Okay, so let's look as far as I mean, I'm going to come back to this example to go over the accuracies, but let's look at just the interface changes in version 4. There's been a couple of 
I think, really smart name changes to the tabs. Uh, the second tab has been renamed to GeoReference, which is really what's happening here. Third tab is Measure and Draw, again, which is what is happening. And the last tab is View and Export. And there's been a little bit of refinement to this. Uh, with Now we have a 3D model. Okay. We have a projection preview. Uh, we have a report on control points, which I think we'll talk a little bit about when we get to accuracies again. We have a listing of all our new points and what's not in this drawing. Um, or job in Datagram 3D is we have topo points, but there are none created, so there are none to show up here. We have in the upper right-hand corner, which has not changed, the AutoCAD Connect, so you can connect your, your drawing to uh, your job to AutoCAD 2014 right now. That'll be expanded to other versions of AutoCAD and other CAD platforms. We can also, let's go back to the 3D model, we can now toggle layers on and off. Okay, so there's all the layers are off, and all the layers back on. That's a really nice feature for going through and looking at what you've drawn in Datagram 3D. When we do our exports, which we can see down at the bottom right-hand corner, we can include control points, don't include control points, or include all points when we do our exports. Again, I'm not going to go into the features here, but we have horizontal projections that we can export to and vertical planes we can export to. I'm not going to go into that. But uh, mostly What's important is we can export in DXF, so you can bring it right to your CAD file. That hasn't changed. There's a PDF report. Run that for a minute. And we can export point files in XYZ and YXZ formats. Okay, so some of this is new in, in version 4, like the, the layers toggling them on and off. And then we can also, which is new, uh, we can show point. Duck here for a minute. Oh, there we go. We can show point names too in the 3D viewer. That's nice. And we can turn on meshes, which is a new feature in Datagram 3D. Okay, so I'll turn that off for now. If we go back to the, the images screen, this project in of itself is completely linked in one image. So let me just open up a project that isn't Going to the wrong directory. Let's see what we have here. I don't know if this one will. Let's let this open for a minute. So, when you first bring in your images, you link them together. Let's. Yeah, I don't want to take the time because it's going to, going to run it in the background, which is going to take about 10, 15 minutes. And unfortunately, I, I can't do that without making that run. But what will happen is if it doesn't link them, a button comes up on the right-hand side, 
in version 4, and you can manually link those images together. Maybe what I'll do is uh, let me just open up another job because I just want to show you topo points. And then we'll come back. I'll let that chug along and we'll move on with the presentation while it's doing that. So we'll come back to that. This is a topographic survey of a dirt pile. Everything is slow because of all the software running. Here we go. Okay, so again, we, they brought in the images. They uh, matched it up with a camera calibration. They've linked them together into one cluster. Then they anchored it with a few small points a few small selection of control points, that is. And this shows you the manual topo points that were created. Okay. And speaking of points, let's just look at the top screen. If we were to create a new point, we can now give it uh, the number to start numbering the points at, and it will automatically do that. We can also, from a drop-down list, choose the point codes. Okay, uh, we can enter that data by clicking the More button, but we can also come to Tools, Point Code Library, and we can add a new code, let's call it Bottom Bank, for instance, and I'll leave the, the code description blank for right now, but oh, I cannot do that, I'm sorry. I haven't tried to leave it blank because I've been filling it in all along, so good thing. Okay, so we create a new code and then that becomes available. So what we can do is the there's now a button for automatic topo points, and it's just going to process this for a second. And then we can just draw an area that we want capture data and it will automatically work in the background extracting points in that topographic area and we can see that you know, as soon as it stops automatically finding them so it's working in the background extracting points for the topo automatically and that's a new feature in version 4.0 and you can see that it's done that and by the orange dots but we can go to the approve screen look at topo points and we can see all the points that were created with topo points so that was an automated process automatic process i should say and we can go to topo points now in the reports and we can see all the topo points that were created and we're looking at accuracies of i would say about a tenth to a couple of hundredths of a foot x y and z and again that was a completely automated process so that's a great new feature in datagram 3d okay so let's just for a minute we'll move on let me open up this other job so somebody just said their laptop just crashed and and yes it will be a, this uh webinar is being recorded it will be available. It takes me a couple of days to process that, process that with the holidays. Probably won't be ready for the first of the week, but uh, we will provide you with a recorded version of this webinar. All right, so let's... Good luck with your laptop. Sorry to hear that. Let's go back. To this project, and then what I'm going to do is just reselect the camera calibration which is going to undo the work and then I'm going to click link and for 17 images to link those I think is going to take 
normally it takes I just did this the other day it took on this exact project uh, it took I think 12 13 minutes uh, again things run a little bit slower because I have a lot of programs running at the time but uh, what it's doing is using pixels in the images to link them together now let's let that do its thing and let's switch to the presentation and let's get back to where we were okay so again i want to give a little bit of background into what's happening with this software and why it's working you know so why now uh, a lot of surveyors are surprised to learn that they can even do something like this so the reason we can do it now is this intersection of the revolution in digital photography with the rapid evolution of office computing the cameras now you can get a really high resolution camera 20 to 24 megapixels which allows us to get two centimeter accuracy with the right conditions and we'll go over that in a minute relatively inexpensive five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars depending on some of the equipment that comes with it which we recommend and you'll see in a few slides you know today it's very difficult and, and labor intensive to be collecting survey data a lot of field notes and sketches and we're trying to reduce that by being able to draft right on images and that's what close range photogrammetry does and datagram 3d offers a new paradigm of going into the field shooting with a camera for a very short period of time taking a small number of anchor points to geo reference those images and then going back to the office processing that in datagram 3d measuring and drawing directly on those images So one of the benefits of this is there's no need for digitization and stereoscopic views. This is something, again, any user can do by drawing right on images as opposed to conventional fo aerial photogrammetry, if you will. And the values of this is increased productivity. You save a lot of field time and office time. Uh, there's no need to get it right the first time, if you will, in that if you go out and do a certain amount of work, with datagram 3d in your camera and you realize you need something else located all you have to do is open up your project and start working in it there's no need necessarily to go back out to the field you've captured the data in images faster turnaround times if you looked at that case study that I just showed you uh, it was about what took about 40 percent of the time to get that job done which I as the surveyor appreciated because a my client wanted the project quicker they were trying to beat some cold weather that had come in and it was particularly chilly that day out on the field so the less time in the field uh, all the better for me becoming a fair weather surveyor as i get older i'm, I'm sorry to say um, exceptional quality control we can see what was what we're measuring in datagram 3d there's no need to uh, try to figure out from the field notes whether they locate a top of curb, a bottom of curb, for instance. When you do the drafting, it's what I call what you see is what you get drafting. And then uh, obvious safety benefits. We don't have to go out into the road. We don't have to go into uh, areas with uh, electrical equipment. We don't have to go on top of stockpiles, uh, which apparently OSHA does not like surveyors to do, or down into you know shallow pits uh, trenches if uh, on top of pipes if you're doing as built for something like that so we'll start the review of datagram 3d accuracy let me just check on progress of what we had okay so it hasn't finished linking the images because I do want to show you the manual merge area of the software but we'll let that go it's about halfway there 
So one of the things that you'll see is that, and what I really like about Datagram 3D, is that when you create a new point, it automatically finds that point, which is key to extracting the data, but it finds that point in at least two other images. When it's done that, it extracts a full 3D coordinate, likely finds it in more than those three minimum images, and if you've done the work correctly, then uh, that it will, will show up in multiple images, creating uh, redundancy and extra accuracy. But you can go to the Approve screen. It's an important function and feature of Datagram 3D because we want surveyors to be actively proving the work that they create. And you can not only verify that the points were created correctly by looking at the images and seeing where that point shows up on each image, but you can also refine that as well. And you get a report of what the accuracies are. Now, that accuracy is dependent on a lot of things. It's like a total station. You're not just going to set up a total station and say, I'm getting three seconds and two millimeters plus 30 parts per million. If you're not level, plumb, over the point, there are certain uh, techniques that need to be applied and used, and this is no different. It's just a different way of working with a new piece of equipment being a regular, inexpensive, high-resolution camera. So positional accuracy in closer, and this is true for any close-range photogrammetry software, there are factors such as camera resolution in megapixels, and uh, that's a huge factor. Uh, distance from the camera of to the measured object. So I'm going to be getting a lot more accurate results if I'm 50 feet away from an object rather than 500 feet away. So there are limits to that accuracy and that largely has to do with the resolution of the camera. But uh, at the end of the day, you're never going to be more accurate than your original survey control. So the accuracy of those georeferencing control points or inaccuracy, as the case may be, however inaccurate they are, is going to pass through into Datagram 3D through the system, which is true of any software you're using, whether you're putting that into CAD. If your traverse control is, is has a certain accuracy, that's all you can expect to uh, get further through your, your project. And then lastly, really important, is the minimum angle between images. So this is sort of like resection if you want to imagine it that way and the better the angles between three images the better the results you're going to gain we do recommend an 18 plus megapixel camera which can allow for about one to two centimeter accuracy from a distance of about 150 meters with that said i think the price difference between an 18 and a 24 megapixel camera for instance uh, if you can afford that price difference difference, which isn't huge, I would go for the 24 megapixel. So here's a, a little bit about the key principle of uh, photogrammetry, in this case close range photogrammetry. With any two images, we can extract the coordinate of a point if, both, if that point is shown on those two images. And we can, let me get my tools going here. Okay, so if we know the center of the camera, oh, that's not a good color, hold on. The camera, and we know the point on the image, we know that vector that the point lies on. And what you can see on on this other image is that same vector. Okay, I'm going to draw a little parallel to it. Okay, and that's the epipolar line. So that point lies somewhere on that image. We know the center of that camera finds the same pixel. And it can tell you where, where they intersect. Okay, now. At a minimum, all you need are two images. 
But Datagram 3D is unique in that it requires three images for redundancy. Okay. But the key to it is we need to know the uh, lens characteristics of that camera, and that's done in a quick calibration process. And, and then we have to keep that lens at the same focus when we go out in the field. We can't change that, or it changes the characteristics of the camera. All right, let's get back on this. So again, when we're taking pictures in the field, we want to have good angles between these three images that we're taking. And like a resection, the best way to do that is to have 90 degrees between the outer two images and the middle image right in the middle at 45 degrees. That provides the best geometry. And with the wide field of view that we're going to recommend, the camera lens that you use, you get a lot of overlap. We need a 60% overlap between images and with three images we can extract any point that can be seen in those images however we do recommend that you take more images than that but to get accurate results we recommend that you use uh, a, if you use a zoom lens that you don't change its settings if we if we do the calibration for instance if it's a you know, 18 to 55 millimeter lens, and we do the calibration at 18 millimeters, and then you go out in the field and you change it to 50 millimeters, it will not work. We will not be able to get accurate, any results, really. So we recommend buying a, a fixed lens, 16 millimeter or smaller, wide angle lens. Okay, which is shown on the bottom right. Okay. We do recommend that. So when you're choosing a camera and lens, again, we want a high-resolution camera. There are some examples on the right-hand side, but uh, we we are pretty camera agnostic, and there are some recommend recommendations in the Datagram 3D user manual. But the Sony A6024 megapixel camera is a, a very good camera. Better resolution allows for higher accuracy. We recommend an 18 megapixel or better camera. I, I think if you can afford it, go to the 24 megapixel camera. Again, we, use, we recommend that you use a wide-angle lens because you get a larger field of view. They're crisper images. Uh, the calibration goes a lot easier, and uh, they can't be changed in the field. Okay, and use a fixed focal length lens. So even if you had an adjustable lens at 16 millimeters, I don't know if they go down that low. I know some go to 18. I, I think there is one, actually, for the Sony that starts at 16 millimeters. It's just important that you never change that when you're in the field or you will not be able to work with the resulting images. Okay, so if possible, get a, a lens without uh, manual zoom. Uh, again, a good example is the Sony A6000. Uh, it's compact, it has interchangeable lenses, it's 24 megapixel resolution, and you can get a 16 millimeter fixed focal length wide angle lens that, that goes on it. So that's a, a good choice, but there are other uh, make some models out there that will do the job just as well. All right, so let me just check on how. All right, so we're just going to jump back for a minute. And I just want to show you in version 4.0. So we ran the 17 images. It linked them together into two clusters. And because of that, now there's a button here called Manual Cluster Merge. All right, we'll click that. I'm not going to go through the whole process, but what we can do is pick the first cluster, which was 12 images, and we can drag a couple of images up into the left two panes. Pick the second cluster, which is five images. 
and this is new to version 4. And then what we can do is just add a manual tie point and then just go in and find common features. Uh, for instance, maybe this traffic arrow and find it in the same, the same spot in the four images and click on it. When we do that with five manual cluster point, tie points rather, it will then uh, process that and it will merge it into into one cluster. So that's the manual cluster merge feature in Datagram 3D version 4. So let's go back while I'm here and open up this job. All right, so what we're going to do for the rest of the, the webinar is compare the accuracy. This is something that and not surprisingly, I've gotten a lot of questions from surveyors on uh, after every one of these webinars as to how accurate is it really. So again, depends on those prior uh, factors that I gave you. If we have a good quality camera with high resolution, you take the images in a, in a good way so that we have plenty of that overlap, extra images, and good angles between the images, good quality survey control, we can get very highly accurate results. But what we'll do here is we'll create new points. Well, what I've done already is created new points where there were field locations existing. And what I did was I used one, two, three, four, five. I did seven different projects, different types of projects. Some were more road related or parking lot related. Some were building related, like a building facade. Uh, there was one electrical tower that I used, and this small house site that you're looking at. And I took anywhere from you know three to eight points from from each of those jobs, and created a new point, which I'm going to show you in a minute what I did. But I created a new point where I knew an existing point was located in the field. I approved that to make sure that it was accurate in its location. And then I compared the accuracies reported in Datagram 3D to what we actually measured by, by measuring directly from the existing point to the new point. And I compared those differences or delta values. Okay, so a couple of notes about this is that what you'll see is that. The accuracies, as I showed you before, and you'll see in a minute in Datagram 3D in the approved screen, show the, the expected accuracies X, Y, and Z. The, the elevation, uh, I strictly took that elevation accuracy out and then compared it directly to the elevation measurement accuracy between the two points. So it's sort of a one to one comparison there. In doing the inverse between the two points, I, I needed to know how that related to, if you will, the error ellipse in a way around the new point. So to do that, I just calculated the straight line error between by, by summing up the squares uh, of the x and the y. So uh, just use the Pythagorean theorem, took x squared plus y squared, took the square root of that result, and that gives me the, the radius, if you will, of that error around that point compared uh, or as calculated in datagram 3D. And then I can compare that to what we're actually getting in the distance, uh, which, uh, again, at the end of the day, probably all you're really interested in is the second part of this, which is the direct measurement between the two points for horizontal and vertical distance. You'll see that in the results. Okay, so for instance, I took a, and created a new point at the top of a chimney on this project I'm going to show you in a minute. And I had located that same corner of that chimney in the field. Okay. And the new point as created in Datagram 3D has an error reported of 0 0.036, 0 0.027, and 0 0.011. And when I convert the x and the y to a direct error 
I get 0 0.045. When I then measure between those two points to see how far apart they really are from what was created to, re to what was located in the field, the, the distance between the two in this case was 0 0.047, almost five hundredths of a foot. And the difference in elevation was 0 0.015. If I then compare the errors from the new point to what we measured, you can see that it, it, they're virtually the same. So we get two thousandths of a foot and four thousandths of a foot. So that tells me we're getting really reliable reporting in the new point error reporting. It, it's actually not just precise, it's accurate because it actually will is verified by measuring to the existing point that was located in the field. So let me just show that to you. All right, so here's the small site. And let's see, I created this on image 877. There it is. So what we can do in Datagram 3D is we can turn on and project all the conventional survey control that we located in the field, and that's represented by these funny arrows. And some of these are on the other side of the house, so if it looks a little odd, it's because they're either on the sides or the front of the house. We're looking at the back of the house, but I can turn on the names. All right, so in, in this case, what I did was I had located in the field point number 1135, which was the top corner of the the chimney and then I created new point three where I could see it in the image. Okay? They're not exactly the same. They're a few pixels apart, which is to be expected. And then if I go to the approve screen, here's let's just here's point three. So you can see all the images that it showed up in and I went in and I just made sure that everything looked good on this. By actually, it was good. I added some of the the images, so you can go to any one of these images. I'm not going to do it because it's going to change the accuracies, and I don't want to do that right now because it's tied into the math we're doing. But you can just go in and refine any one of these measurements. You can see that, for instance, I had some changes in lighting because of the overhead trees and some clouds rolled through so it did not automatically find it the same point in these last few, five five images so i manually added them so that's all i did and we're getting accuracies again of 0 0.036 0 0.027 0 0.011 so i took the x and the y calculated a straight line error and then I came in to the new points, and we have a measurement tool. And then I clicked on the new point, snapped to the node for the existing point, and then I get the, the measured difference between the two. So this is probably what you're really concerned with, is that the point created in Datagram 3D for that chimney corner falls within under five hundredths of a foot for the uh, horizontal uh, difference between the two points and the vertical difference is under two hundredths of a foot so that, that's really highly accurate okay and and then i went through and i did that on several points in every job in this case here's another one was a window corner and uh, let's see, we'll just measure it. I don't, don't have to look it up. We'll just measure it. And that one is the horizontal distance is under three hundredths, vertical distance is three thousandths. Okay, so we're getting really uh, good, good accuracies and precision here, if you will. And so I just did that, um, like I said, about three in some jobs, eight in other jobs, depended on how many existing points that I had. Some some projects didn't have a lot of existing 
points in them, so I was limited to to what I could check in them. But again, over six or seven different projects, I added everything up and compared the two and created a worksheet here, which maybe I can make this zoom up a little bigger. How's that look? Okay. So I have 20 points across seven different jobs. And again, I compared uh, most of those shots. Somebody just asked, what method did I use to locate the chimney? Reflectorless shot with a total station? Yes. So uh, to answer that question, I did use uh, reflectorless total station to be able to shoot that corner. Okay, so, and what I wanted to say is, you know, that was something that I could zoom in and see fairly clearly, plus it was my project, so I knew exactly what I had located. Some of these other points and other projects are not my projects. I was not there. And, uh, for instance, some of the less accurate results here are for painted stripes and arrows on roadway surfaces. And from a distance, those look like really crisp tips to those arrows. But when you zoom in, it's kind of hard to tell exactly where to click where the arrow is. And again, I mean, within, within a small amount, and we're not talking about a, a huge difference here, but I also don't know what those surveyors located in the field exactly. So I think any any two surveyors might go out and locate that same arrow tip conventionally and, and get probably within five hundredths or a tenth different results on different days. Uh, one of these results, I think the highest inaccuracies was measuring a, a point on a very high electrical tower. So uh, there's probably some error in there on the reflectorless total station shot that you have to factor into it. Plus, it was not very easy to see exactly what was located there. But to be within a couple of tenths or less, I think is, is pretty good. But most of the time, if you can clearly see what's in the image, we can uh, click accurately. I'm not worried about the precision here, but the accuracy of what you click on is obviously important. But in the background, uh, what we can see is that we have the deltas between what was calculated and what was located in the field for the distance between the two. We're talking a couple of hundredths of a foot. So one of them is a tenth. Okay, and vertically, they're almost right on. We're talking four thousandths of a foot. Uh, the highest one is seven or eight hundredths of a foot if we round up a little. So we're getting really good results by just clicking on points in, well, not picking on points, picking on pixels in images. And that's really a unique way of working. Plus, again, if we look at this project, what I liked about it was uh, it sure doesn't look cold from those images, but I can tell you it was cold and I was able to come back and do all of this job in the office at the convenience of sitting at my desk. So that, that was nice. And again, about an hour in the field with pictures and uh, locating a few key points and then into the office to finish it up. So those are the accuracies that you can see with Datagram 3D. I've tried to pick things that weren't cherry picked <laughs> that would come out with the best with the best results. I wanted to show you that, you know, even with a little uncertainty about what you're clicking on in the field, in the field on the images from what you located in the field, for instance, or what you would normally locate in the field, we're talking about a tenth to two tenths and if i maybe was there on the site and knew exactly what 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 it was in some instances i probably would have been a little more accurate in what i picked but 
Again, I think those are the outliers at the far end of the spectrum. I think if you look at this, most of these shots, uh, shots on average are between two to five hundredths of a foot, and the elevations are a little bit better even, but they're about the same. I mean, it's just, in this case, I think some of them just happen to work out in a small data set of 20. I think happen to work out a little more accurately in general. What I've seen is you get the same results, X, Y. Z. So let's go back to the slide. Okay. So that's what I did. I went through and I compared those. Uh, let's look at a little bit about, again, to get this accuracy, we have to do a little bit of technique and because I don't want to just tell you that something is accurate, give you the numbers and lead you to believe that you're just going to go out there with a camera and automatically be able to get those results. It takes uh, a certain technique, uh, and obviously we went through the quality of the camera to work. Um, but if we're surveying an intersection, whether we're using a UAV or a tall pole, a monopole, we want to, so we want to be photographing towards the center of the intersection, getting that overlap going around, then measure a few survey control points to georeference it. If we're working on a strip of a road, the, the sort of circular up the road middle, around the side, and then around to the other side that you see is if you're using a UAV. If you are using a pole, you don't necessarily need to do that. But we want to divide the road up into smaller sections. There is a 50 image limit on Datagram 3D right now. And we want to take consecutive images from both sides of the road. Again, 60% overlap is important. Uh, when possible, we want to elevate the camera above ground level. Uh, and that's an important factor because we want to eliminate foreground obstructions. And we also want to modify the elevation of the camera between images. That gives, again, image, image angles. It gives us different angles going down towards the ground. Uh, which is what this graphic is about, elevating the camera. And there's a lot of ways you can do that. We can, we've seen surveyors stand on a truck off the ed edge or a roof of a building. Predominantly, we've seen them using a telescoping pole or a mini quadcopter, uh, which is being used all over the world, uh, more so perhaps in the U.S. as we await FAA rules on that which should be out any day now they claim but we're running out of 2014 so we'll give you an update as soon as the commercial use of uav rules come out but they are on the way it's going to happen uh, again we want to slightly uh, vary the camera's elevation in, to get uh, images with different angles this will ensure optimal measurement uh, accuracy um, this is Important that what I showed you on the job where the lighting changed in the middle of the project because of trees overhanging and because of some clouds came through. But take your images in consistent lighting, you'll get better results. In that case, I still got results. I just had to do a little bit of man. Well, I didn't have to. I just added to the accuracy by manually adding five, uh, that point into five images, the top of the chimney point. Again, we want to take as many overlapping images as possible. Uh, 20 to 30 consecutive images is good. Uh, the lower left-hand side shows a building facade. In that case, they started at the right-hand side of the building, facing the middle, then worked to the left, keeping the camera facing the middle. The middle graphic is a intersection facing the middle, going around, and then the road strip, which we showed you to begin with. Uh, should have taken that out. Uh, Geo-referencing the images. So it's important that we have very accurate and uh, easily identifiable photo control points. It's, we don't want them to be ambiguous in any way, shape, manner, or form, and we want to locate them accurately. I think this is very similar to what we've all been doing with aerial photogrammetry. Again, they have to be very accurate. If you want to get two centimeter accuracies, your survey control has to be that accurate to begin with. It's important 
to get these accuracies that we don't cluster all our control points together, which you can see in the left-hand image. We want to box in the area, if you will, spread them around for, for uh, left to right, forward to back, up and down in that image so that we have multiple planes and we bound the area that we want to be doing drafting in when we get back to Datagram 3D. We want to, I sort of mentioned this, but it comes up all the time. Do not take all your control points on any one plane, horizontally or vertically. So we wouldn't want all the control points on the ground or on the face of a building if we were doing a building facade. We want to, we want to vary those control points to georeference for, again, left to right, up and down, and depth, if you will, so that they're not all on one plane. There are limits. We, we want to be clear. There are limits to using close-range photogrammetry. You have to be able to see in the images what you want to measure. So if there's traffic, fences, vegetation, again, foreground obstructions, you're going to have problems. We have to, have, have to see the object in at least two images. In Datagram 3D, it requires three to, to get the redundancies into it, but we might have troubles in tunnels and deep trenches. There must be some feature on the measured object. So if you were doing featureless piles of, if you're doing featureless piles of industrial grade material, that could be problematic. All right, so we're getting to the end here. In summary, uh, we're talking about, you know, revolution in digital photography is really changing the way land surveyors are working. And now we're measuring and drawing directly on images. This, sorry, it's from a different presentation, but UAVs are an efficient tool for this work. I'm really looking forward to getting some guidance from uh, and rules from the FAA. Uh, it should be out any day now. But you can also work using telescoping pole. And about Datamate is they're the, they're the world's leading field-to-plan software suite, and really their principle is on making land surveying work easier, faster, safer, and all at superior accuracy. You can visit www.datamate.com to learn more about them and Datagram 3D. We have some contact information here, which I'll leave this slide up for a while. Hold on, somebody's asking a question. Can you take a close-up of a monument in a well and then back off from it with images to start incorporating the surrounding area. Not exactly sure uh, what that means. I think the key to it is anytime you're trying to do something in a confined area is that we need the three images to begin with. That's a minimum required to run Datagram 3D. That point should show up in three images, but there has to be good angles between those images. So that's the challenge if you're in a confined, confined space, is getting good angles between the images. So uh, again, we can, if you want to uh, reach out to us, we can uh, specifically look into that instance and see how that case can be used with Datagram 3D. You might not just not, not be able to get accurate results, but again, the challenge is lighting also, and then uh, good angles and a minimum uh, between it good angles between images and a minimum of three images. I hope that answered your question. Uh, again, I'm going to leave this up for a while. So there's the contact information. You can uh, certainly email inquiries at datamate.com to find out more about Datagram 3D. We do plan on having the next Datamate Live webinar uh, tentatively on January 29th, 2015. That is uh, to be determined is what the topic is. I really, I'm going to answer a question in a minute, but I really want to thank you for joining us. I know many of you have joined on for all the webinars. Some are new. We appreciate your attendance and joining in with us. If you have suggestions for what you'd like to see in future webinars, please reach out to us and let us know. We're very interested in learning what you would like to learn about. Uh, so somebody asked, can you expand on the industrial Pile. So I'm going to stay online for a little bit and uh, just answer that question. But 
uh, if, if you need to leave the webinar right now, that's fine. So, John, if you're measuring industrial piles, in general, that's not a problem. But if we think of it from the point of view of a gravel pile, if you will, those individual granules of gravel, the aggregate in that pile, they have they have edges that are actually very distinct. It may look like it's you know not very distinct, but they, when you zoom in, you can actually see the you can actually see the edges of that gravel, and therefore there's difference in colors and difference in pixels, colors, and therefore the software can more easily define that uh, point on that kind of a pile. But industrial sand. Uh, where it's a homogenous, completely one color, that the granules are so small that it cannot uh, distinguish between one pixel to the other, if you will, uh, will be much more of a challenge, if at all possible. So I hope that answers about industrial piles. It really depends on the material. With that said, there might be some techniques to be able to mock points on that pile to be able to show up in the images. And if you reach out to us, we can, um, I can maybe explain that in depth a little bit more. Uh, can I briefly explain? So, pans, so a sand pile of the same material would be difficult for automation. You, you, they want to know if you can therefore create topo, uh, manual topo points on that. Again, the the results of that really depend on the how many edges are in those granules when you zoom in uh, on any one pixel. And if it's totally homogenous, like an industrial, very fine sand, it may not work. Now, with that said, if you want to send us some pictures, uh, we'd be happy to evaluate that and let you know uh, what we would expect the success rate to be or not. But uh, what I found with manual topo points is that it's just something that if you zoom in and you look at the pixel, because you've got to figure those pixels are really small area, and if you can manually pick the one that stands out can be helpful. Um, somebody asked, I'm just going to scroll up here for a minute. Can you explain clusters? Sure. Let me... Go back to, let me make sure this is showing. There we go. Let me go back to this project. So, let's go to the images screen. So, we brought in in this project, or I brought in 34 images. And when I apply my cal camera calibration, which has to match up with the camera that I used, and that's on the top right hand corner of the screen there. My screen is absolutely going crazy right now. So, <laughs> see if I can get the annotation tool out working again. So we 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 select a camera from the drop down list, and then we this becomes live the link button. We click that. What it's doing is looking at the common points or pixels rather between images. So if we look at the first image. Actually, there's a lot of overlap here, right? So it's looking at the overlapping areas and it's comparing pixels to be able to link them together. I, I, in this project, there may have been multiple clusters and I had to do the manual cluster. I don't remember. I did this a few months ago. I'm almost thinking not because it was before. Uh, ver I think I did this before version 4.0 came out. But anyways, it's looking at those common pixels between images to interrelate those images before we actually do any georeferencing. So it's sort of tying them together manually well, through the automatic process, but uh, tying them together to figure out how they're georeferenced together using the pixels themselves. Now, it's not in your coordinate system. It's in, you know, just a relational system from image to image 
to link them together. But what that does is prior versions of Datagram 3D, we would have needed to anchor every one of these images and with four control points. And that was a little bit of a tedious manual process. But once we have it linked into clusters, each cluster only requires, you know, anywhere minimum of three up to about 10. And on average, I think you're going to see eight to 10 control points to anchor the, those, each one of those clusters. And what that means is that every image now does not need control on it to georeference it and that reduces hours worth of work in datagram 3d so where that last project when i i ran it it took about 13 minutes to do 17 images that 13 minutes saved you at least an hour's worth of work from the prior version so i hope that answered your question thank you mel Kevin says, so a sand pile of the same material would be difficult for automation. Oh, I already answered that question. I think I'm going to scroll back down. I don't think I, I read the top of your question, <laughs> but uh, in the instance of if you have a homogenous pile or light colored site with strategic placement, arbitrary points work for the georeference. Yeah. So you certainly could put some kind of markings up on the sand pile i've heard people pose i don't know that anybody's actually tried this but uh oh somebody just said it's, i can only have a small area of the screen i can read so the next person suggested this and this is what i've also heard that some people are, are thinking about taking a paint gun and going out and splotching areas on the side of the pile that's certainly an option Again, it really depends whether the, whether it will work or won't work on how homogenous and like colored without any individual surfaces within that pile material um, as to whether it will be able to create new points or not. All right, I, let me just scroll back because I, I make sure I got all your questions answered. I think that's it. Are there any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you. I again, I hope I was able to answer your questions. The this webinar is recorded, or is in the process of being recorded, and as soon as it is processed, I do have to do a little bit of editing to get the sound onto it. I will publish that and get it out to you, uh, probably with the holiday, probably be next week. I can also include, if you'd like, the... Uh, Excel sheet showing the accuracies and the slides too. If anybody is interested in obtaining those, let me know. Happy to do so. Again, if you have any questions, you can uh, contact me or Datamate directly. Probably uh, just as good at inquiries at datamate.com and visit datamate.com to learn more. They have a really great product page on Datagram 3D and they have uh, one section of that. Uh, some really great case studies, too, that you can read. I do recommend doing that. I want to wish everybody a Happy New Year. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be signing off right now. Thank you. Work smart. Be brilliant.